a day for the history books. The curtains have closed on the greatest show above Earth. The first solar eclipse of its kind in nearly a century has traveled across the U.S. coast to coast, shrouding some parts of the nation in darkness for over two minutes. Dr. Michio Kaku, CBS News science and futurist contributor, joins us now from Cape Girardeau, Missouri, to discuss this celestial phenomenon. Dr. Kaku, what were your takeaways from all of this today? Well, first of all, it was indeed the space spectacular of the century. It was perfect. Everything went according to script. First, it got dark, and then it got cold, and then the insects and the birds became quiet. And then you looked up, and the stars came out. You could clearly see Venus. And then you had the money shot. You could clearly see the corona, the atmosphere of the sun flaming from the disk. We've never seen this before, quite this way before. This was, in fact, the most heavily researched eclipse in all of human history. Mm. What in particular, Amicio, were scientists studying during this eclipse? We focused on the corona because there's a mystery of where the solar flares come from. You realize that once every few years, solar flares shoot out and can disrupt communications on the Earth. Sometimes our astronauts have to be moved in a special compartment to avoid the solar flares. Mm. A big solar flare could wipe out our satellites, affect power stations, create havoc on the planet Earth because we're so dependent on the Internet and electricity. And so we scientists want to know what energizes these solar flares. Back in 1859, a big one wiped out telegraph wires. 150 years ago. And if that were to happen again, it would be the mother of all blackouts. <laughs> so we have to study these eclipses to understand the atmosphere of the sun. It sounds like the data collection process during this eclipse, especially since it was over the continental United States, so accessible, um, was huge. How did scientists collect all that data? Every scientist worth their salt jumped on the bandwagon and said, I'm going to get on an airplane. I'm going to go in the path of totality. I'm going to reserve time on telescopes to get as much data as they could. And of course, people begged, borrowed, and stole any airplane ticket, uh, any hotel room they could possibly get a hold of. Here, there was eclipse mania. All the hotel rooms were booked. People flooded into town to, to witness something that will not happen in their lifetime again. A total eclipse that goes from coast to coast. Last time was 99 years ago. And so we scientists did not want to miss this once in a lifetime opportunity. In fact, some people say that if you look at the totality of the people who watched it on the internet, on social media, it is perhaps the largest single communal event in the history of the human race. Mm. That's such an important point, uh, a communal event. I wonder how communal and collegial scientists that are studying this event, any of you worth your weight and salt, how you are getting together to, to try to understand this relationship between Earth and the sun um, after this solar eclipse and all the data that's going to come from it. Well, I'm a physicist, and I'll have to say that this is the closest I've ever felt to a spiritual experience. That is a cosmic connection with the universe, an event that took place a quarter of a million miles from the surface of the Earth affected the stadium right here in Missouri. So we have a connection with the universe. And now we have instruments, we have spectrometers, we have all sorts of devices and telescopes, and of course the internet, to tease apart all the mysteries of the sun. Realize that the sun is our closest celestial neighbor, but there's so many mysteries about the sun. The corona, for example, that I mentioned is several million degrees in temperature, but the surface of the sun is only 10,000 degrees. That's a mystery. That violates common sense. Mm. The further you go from the sun, it should be colder, not hotter. And we don't know why. Yeah. What is happening there? Why did you choose, um, Dr. Kaku, to be in that specific so uh, spot for this solar eclipse? Well, I got invited to speak here at Southeast uh, Missouri State University uh, almost a year ago. And I said to myself, aha. <laughs> they, too, understand there's going to be an eclipse mania. 
there's going to be the stampede here. And sure enough, all the hotels are booked, uh, traffic jams. Uh, it's very hard to come here as a consequence. And I, I jumped on the opportunity because I realized that this is an event that's not going to happen again in my lifetime. In 2024, the next solar eclipse is not going to go from coast to coast like it did just a few minutes ago here in Missouri. What did it look like from your vantage point? Um, how were you able to relish it? It was incredible because it was like according to the textbooks. First, it got a little bit dark. You put on your glasses, it you can see the sun being eaten up by the moon. And then it got cold, cold. And then the animals stopped chirping, stopped making noise. And then looking in the sky, I saw the planet Venus. When was the last time you saw the planet <laughs> Venus in daytime? And then, of course, the money shot. I took off my special glasses, looked directly at the sun, and I saw something that I've never seen before. And that is the moon perfectly, perfectly cover the disk of the sun. And with the naked eye, with the naked eye, I could see the corona of the sun. I've never seen that before. This is the first time in my life, and perhaps the lives of millions of people, they've actually seen the corona of the sun without any sunglasses at all. Mm. This is incredible. All the stars had to align. Dr. Michio Kaku in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, we appreciate your time.